Welcome to Perth's number one podcast. You're listening to the Jamo and Dylan Show. Yeah, yeah, we're on the way to Dunsbra, a little mad trip with the boys. We're celebrating. G'day guys and welcome back to the Jamo and Dylan Show. It is episode 145 today and Dylan is coming from my house in Budapest. I am, mate. Right here in Hungary, in the middle. Mm-hmm. Shout out George Ezra. Yep, good tune. I was talking to my mate from work the other night, Siva, and... Um, Mm-hmm. We were talking about who are the artists that make the most white people music. Oh, he's got to be up there. George eh? Ezra was in the list. We yeah. also had yeah. we had like Pink. We had Taylor mm-hmm. Swift. Oh, Pink's big, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we had the script. Oh, there's so mm. many, so the many script, bro. I like the script, but that's some white shit. Oh, I like them too. One Republic, white. Yeah, we well, yeah, are. That's very yeah. Yeah, yeah, the script, bro. That's true. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Dude. Yeah. White. Um, yeah, that is some white shit, like the whole like punk rock type thing. Like, oh, definitely. Frat boy, frat boy Blink, energy. Blink-182. Yeah, bro. My brother loves that. Oh, amazing. That's like a rite of passage in the 2000s to like Blink-182. I remember when we first got laptops in primary school and everyone had Blink-182 like backdrops, wallpapers, screensavers. Mm-hmm. Bro, green, green Day. <laughs> oh, Green Day, that's elite. Green Day, bro. Oh, Speaking wow. of music, you've just gone to the Ziget Music Festival. I have, mate. It was it was a good time. Yeah, good fun. We were there on the last day, so you could tell everyone was worn out. It was like the last day of leavers, you know, because they're all camping. Okay, yeah. it, it gave me that vibe, obviously. I think a lot of people stay on the island. Mm-hmm. You know, and they camp and um, so, you know, during the day, we got there at about two, obviously morale was a bit low, people are tired, but once it, it's like everything, bro, it reminded me just of Leavers, once it hits sunset, Mm. honestly, it's magical, that's when the magic begins, bro. Oh, now I'm jealous. (laughs) That's when the, like, you know, we got there and it was like two o'clock and we were walking around thinking, oh, you know, it's, it's okay, but not what we expected. Yeah, and then we were also saying, "Oh, but you know, it is the last day. They're obviously tired. Like, fair enough." Yeah. So you know, we sit down, have a couple of drinks. Um, decently priced as well, cheaper than an Australian festival. Okay, that's good. So pretty good, pretty happy. Like, with how that. much? How much for like a drink? So, um, they have these things like it's a reusable cup. Okay. So initially, you pay like a dollar for it, right? But then. The reusable cup is the reason I think the drinks are cheaper. So maybe, I think it was like 10 bucks, but for 500 mil drink. Right. Okay. Pretty good. And they make them pretty strong as well, which no complaints here. Yeah. What drink Um, were you getting? I was just getting the, we were switching like some vodka orange juice, vodka soda, just the standards, the classics. I'd love if there was vodka orange juice at Australian music festivals. Yeah, bro, and they, they make them like, it's, it's you know, they use the good quality vodka, you see them make mm. it in front of you, they pour that shit in, they're, they're generous over here with their drinks. Because I'll be at Listen Out and I'll be getting heart palpitations from the Red Bull vodkas mm. all night. Exactly, bro, it's the only choice, eh? Yeah, so they're promoting heart I don't disease even like, I'm not even a big. I'm not even a big Red Bull guy in general, like neither. it's not one of my top five drinks, bro, you know? I'm not but an energy drink boy. Sometimes it's the only option. Yeah, neither. I don't need it, bro. All I need but, is a chocolate bar. Yeah. It's truck drivers, tradies, emos, mm. and Teenage, punk rock like, people. Yeah. yeah. They love it, bro. Big monster can or something. Oh, they love it. My sister used to be into all that. She used to have like, she? all I the different flavours. I remember she used flavors. to like monster. She had yeah. like... <laughs> oh, funny. To me, bro, the energy drinks don't give me energy. No. I, I don't have one and think I'm ready to go. I kind of no, think... No, oh, bro, I get natural fact. energy. Um, if I'm outside in the sun, the sun will give me energy. You know yeah, what I mean? Vitamin D, bro. But, um, yeah, so obviously... And then once I, once it hit five, six, sun gets a bit lower. You see everyone just come out of the woodworks, bro. Like, mm. I don't know where they were, but it, it started to happen. And then, yeah, That's once cool. it was at... Once it was at dusk time, bro, it was sick. They're coming out like the Thriller music video, Michael Jackson. Yes, bro. Just out of nowhere. We <laughs> saw all these tents, saw these all these tents everywhere, no people. Then all of a sudden, they're all out and about. I'm probably good. sleeping all day because it's been, I what, think five, so. six days. Well, yeah, we, I was looking at like, 
like just to check it out, like Snapchat, you know, you can click on locations yeah, yeah. that are busy and they go until 5, 6 a.m., bro. Wow. Every what day, time? So. so, like over here, our set times are pretty standard for us. Are the set times yeah. similar over there or is it later? Well, it was a bit later. Like, like I said, maybe because it was last day, it was more chill, but mm. at four o'clock, there wasn't too much happening. Yeah. But then, um, yeah, come like five, six, you know, some DJs start coming out, a few bands start playing, and then they just go all night, bro. Two, three, four. That's awesome. And yeah, good stuff. How, it's a good festival. So I want you to do this thing for me, and mm. I want you to rate the people that you've come into contact with. So, for example, you've got to put up the Hungarians against the Spanish in terms of, like, okay. friendliness, niceness. All right, all right. This is a good one, actually. Mm. So... Number one, the Italians, there's something about them, bro. They're, they're welcoming, they're nice, okay. they're helpful. Yeah. They're, they are number one. All Hospitality, right. I feel like you can't beat them. Right. Um, I guess. Who Spanish were the rudest? People were pretty, the rudest. The French, surely. <laughs> you know what? I actually think, um, I don't know about rude. The French surprised me. They weren't as rude as I thought. I was expecting them to be, but yeah, we found well, them all right. The Western world, we get fed all these like ideas of the rude French. Yeah, bro. Well, that's the thing. I, I had a lot of low expectations going there because of what I'd heard, mm. but we had a really good time and didn't have you know that many bad experiences. Yeah. We actually... Um, I guess the only bad thing was when, like, we, there was this bottle-throwing fight in front of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Did I mention that last week? No, you didn't. I must have told mum about it, bro. Yeah. So this is the only danger we've seen in all of Europe, right? It's like 10 o'clock and we're thinking, oh, we'll walk through Paris at night, right? Because obviously all the lights and it, yeah, we're yeah. thinking, oh, there's got to be something magic here. So it actually, it was very nice, you know, one of the best cities at night. Okay. We get to the Eiffel Tower, bro. There's thousands of people there, right? Because this is when it's like just after the hour when it does the little mm. show. You know, we walk towards it. We, first, we get a view of it from on top of a hill. Then we walk down and where there's a little bridge. We're like 20 meters away. And then I see these two blokes. One's got no shirt on. One's got a singlet on. They're walking aggressively. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? Yeah. They turn around, bro, and they grab two bottles glass bottles and i'm thinking oh no then they're walking towards the eiffel tower i'm thinking bro someone's about to get glass here like oh, what's no. going on you love stuff like this though were you like getting nothing about it was getting crazy it was yeah. getting crazy um so we're like front row 10 meters away just standing there bang throw two bottles at this bloke right and then for the next 10 minutes bro there's this bottle throwing fight across from the eiffel tower Smashing in front of women, smashing in front of men, people on like electric scooters, glass sprinkling up in front of them. It was fucking crazy. Do you know no what it was over? No idea, bro. No idea. It was probably some Albanian shit. Yeah. That's what I know. I know <laughs> they run things over there. It looked pretty crazy. No cops in sight. We walk away. Still continues. Like you hear bottles smashing. They're screaming at each other. And then about five minutes later, I just see this sea, like 200 people running towards us. Oh, no. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, holy fuck, there's a shooting. There's a, like, what's going on? It felt like a horror movie, bro. Me and Carly stand there like, what the fuck? I'm thinking, do we leave? Do we go? Like, I kind of want to see what's going on. Then we walk over maybe three, four minutes later. Cops have sectioned off a whole area. Can't see anything, bro. It was crazy. I couldn't believe it. Like... Bottle fight in front of the Well, the 200 tower. people... Sprinting what? away, bro. Like, I don't know okay. what they saw, but Maybe it was the like they've seen the most... They, no, these people were screaming and crying, bro, as they ran uh -huh. away. I was thinking, like, what the fuck happened? There's been a murder or something that you've missed. Bro, <laughs> it was... That was the only crazy... That made me think, wow, I can see why Taken was filmed here, bro. Like, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I would say the rudest... Well, we, we stopped over in, like... Poland as for like two hours as a stopover mm. to get to here. People in Eastern Europe are not the rudest, but de it's definitely colder. Cold, yes. The cold, like bro. The like they don't, they, they don't, they don't give a shit. Like if you talk to them, it's fine, but they have very stern looks on their face. Yeah, resting bitch faces all around Eastern Europe. Yep, <laughs> yep. They keep the the chat to a 
minimum, you know, yeah. like direct. There's there's not much um not much going on. In Amsterdam, we didn't meet a ton of Dutch people just because there's so many tourists in one small area. Right. So I guess you only interact with like the shop owners, but the ones we did were really good. But I think Italians first. Yep. Um, Spanish people are pretty good because they're similar to Italians, that whole Mm. Southern Europe vibe. So they're pretty good. I'll put French third. That can be the top three. So you've got Italy one, Spain two, France third. Where does Hungary sit? Probably last. Oh, you know what? Because Poland, we only interacted in the airport. So you're not going to count that? Or but they would definitely be last. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sh- shout out the Polish. <laughs> I'm sure it's a lovely place, but it looked it looked pretty cold when I was there all around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we had this sent in from a long time listener. He said, just finished this week's potty, touching on that bloke at the end who he was, sorry, about how he was talking about him punching. Um, Mm -hmm. He wants us to do a segment in the future where fans send in their partners and we have to decide who's punching. And then he goes, call it, who's punching with Jamo and Dylan? (laughs) I like it. We'll get John on the voiceover. Yep. We're going to add it in. That's a good one. And it might not be like an every week thing. It could be every second week, depending on how many submissions we get. I feel like for next week, there'll probably be a few because people will be excited at the prospect. Um, and you got to take it with a grain of salt because it's an entertainment and comedy podcast. We will rip into people. A hundred percent. Exactly. Um, but don't, you know, if you're a seven and she's a 10, don't be too sad with yourself. Seven's not bad. No, that's brilliant. If you're seven a five is, though, yeah. you're going to get it, you know? Most definitely. All right. I'm excited um, to see some like, you know, chicks who are punching. Imagine yeah. seeing like, there's this dude, he's like a, a Greek god. And he's just dating a five and we just have like, that is something you, you don't see it that much, but when you no. do, it's like, wow, what's going on? Like, Definitely. she must have deep pockets. <laughs> Indeed. Um, this is a really good question and it, it relates to travel. This guy yeah. said, got something for the potty boys. My plane from Dubai to Amsterdam was delayed by 45 minutes. Then the pilot announced that they will try and make up the time throughout the flight. We got there on the expected time. I've had this happen a lot of times before. My question is, um, if planes can make up time, why don't they just go faster in the first place? Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed this. Like, a lot of our travel times have said two hours, right? And it's an hour and a half and you're there. And I'm thinking, mm. so you could you could have done that an hour 15. Like, just go the fastest speed. I don't get what's going on. But then I've done some research because I saw that just prior to doing the podcast. And I've added it into the notes, so I'm just going to read it out. Now, it is quite interesting. Um, All right. The simplest method to make up time as a pilot is by asking traffic control for a shorter route, right? Okay. So, you know, like planes never go on a straight line. They always have to go around certain things. And basically they're bypassing, um, like they're changing their flight path, right, to reduce the time. In terms of speeding up they're actually not speeding up the plane and okay they're just going over a more direct route instead of going around all planes fly at the fastest they can at the highest fuel economy right okay and sometimes planes will push it a bit harder to get there and make up the time if they can't cut corners um but it will just cost the airline more Okay, so angling the plane one degree left could take off 20 Mm. minutes, mate, over the course of a trip. Wow. Um, So that's the question answered for you there. But, yeah, I just found it interesting because I often, like, we had a um, plane leave half an hour early and we we only got there five minutes late. And I was like, oh, well, Mm -hmm. that was actually pretty good. Because as soon as you get told, like, your flight's delayed, you're, oh, fuck. The worst is when you're on the tarmac. You know? Yeah, you just got to sit there. Sometimes you're waiting yeah. for the Bro, floaty. <laughs> the plane we had, this is another thing in Poland. So we're lining up, right, to get on the plane from Poland to Budapest. And mm. this one is late. There's lots of confusion. There's three blokes standing there who have bought a ticket, but they've gone, well, there's no seats left, so you can't get on the plane. They're going, but we've bought the ticket. What's happening? So they just get left behind, right? The first group of people get taken on a bus to the 
to the plane because it's not right at the entrance. You have to get on a little bus to go. So there's about a group of 20 of us just standing there waiting. And then we're standing there for like 40 minutes. The bus hasn't come back. So I'm thinking, where's this plane gone, right? We finally go downstairs, get on a little bus, starts driving us around, stops in front of a random plane, but the plane's closed, right? There's no little thing to go up. The guy comes to us, he goes, oh, wh- where are you going? And we said, oh, to Budapest. And he goes, oh, I'm not sure, but let me ask. So they reconnect the stairs. He knocks on the door, bro, to guess out. She opens a little window and he goes, oh, is this the flight to fucking <laughs> Budapest? We're all, we're all in there thinking, bro, what is going on? Like, where's our plane? Yeah. I've never seen this before. He knocked on the door, bro. It was like a comedy show. <laughs> Everyone there's just, we're thinking we're never getting anywhere. They were about to take off, bro, just without us. If he didn't knock on that door. And then he, she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. They open the door, connect the stairs. We have to walk in like 10 of us. Everyone's staring like we're we're late. Yeah. I'm thinking you were about to take off without us. (laughs) What the fuck? Um, How have you gone with like each country's English levels? Like, has there been a big barrier in certain countries? Here there has been. Yeah, and yeah, okay. Yeah, in Budapest. Like in the north of Italy, very good because mm-hmm. lots of them speak English. Once you get when we were south, it was more difficult, but still okay. Spain, they were really good. Um, France, pretty good. Netherlands is probably like the best. They literally speak yeah, English on all, par yeah. with like, yeah, so they speak minimum two languages, everyone, which is pretty elite. Respect. But. The Netherlands is like the Sims, bro. It's exactly the same. Really? I can see what I can see exactly. The dude who made the Sims, he went to the Netherlands, and it's based off that, bro. Actually, because their language sounds like what the Sims <laughs> sound like. I, I'm bro, and it <laughs> looks it's exactly. Yes, it's yes, a, yes, <laughs> it's exact, bro. It's ridiculous. But um, yeah, once like over here, it's more difficult. Like there's shops where. It's just fully in Hungarian, no oh. English translation. That it, so it, it is a bit more difficult here in Eastern mm. Europe. We're fair enough. Like, I don't expect everyone to speak English, but it, this is the only place where it's been noticeable where we've gone, ah, oh, yeah, we don't really know what we're doing. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. What I, heard, that, I don't know what that menu says. Remember there was like a Google trial where there was glasses and like you could see shit in the visor yeah, or whatever? Yeah, yeah, That would be elite, bro. I heard about this new thing and it's very similar to that and I don't know when it's coming out. It could be a year or two, right? But you can look at like a menu, as you said, and it will appear in English. Like yeah. <laughs> That's nuts. what we've been using. We take a photo mm. and then Google will like translate the photo. Oh, that's good. But some languages is a bit hit and miss. Okay. We struggled in Spain at first because in Barcelona they speak Catalan, not yep. Spanish. And then, so that took a few days to, we were thinking, this translation's a bit off. Like, they're very proud over there about being Catalan. Here's another, here's another question for you about languages. What language has sounded the coolest? What language has sounded the coolest? Probably, Probably French, n- hey? Okay. It was A cool. lot of people think it it's a disgusting language, like the, some of the words they say. I kind of, I kind of liked it. It just, it came off nicely, I reckon. Like, because we, we, Dutch just sounds like weird English, like The Sims. Mm. So it was really just funny to hear every time. Yeah, you're giggling like at these was, six foot two men. I haven't, yeah, bro. I haven't heard Hungarian. I don't, because I, w- I literally don't even know what's happening over here most of the time, bro. Like it okay, is confusing. It's just confusing, All right? Yeah. Um, you know, Spanish and Italian, pretty good. But yeah, I did like French. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, we got a message here from a guy called Charles, Charlie, right? Charles. Um, yes, fellas, hope you're both good. Just listen to the latest two episodes today where you talked about any scientists or nerds who listen. Well, I'm an analytical chemist and I work in the pharmaceutical Damn. industry. So any questions I'd be happy to try and answer in the future, um, sh- just shoot me a DM or I can answer via voice message for you boys. Um, yeah, nice one. Him, Love the potty. Look forward to it. Um, 
Yeah, look, I'm not sure what we have right now, but if we have anything, we'll be sure to go to him. If he anything he hears, I mm. want him to send in the answer. I'm happy okay. for him to like just any, address anything. Any questions that we pose, he can just go bang. Yeah, because it's hard to think on the spot, whereas sometimes mm. we get on a ramble with that stuff. But yeah, Definitely. he sounds like the ultimate nerd, bro. I Dead. like I'm it. looking at his photo on Instagram too. He's shredded and he's in a gym. So, wow. so a he's different got a, he's type a genius, of nerd. Mm. shredded. Wow. A different type of nerd indeed. So what is he? An analytical Ana- scientist? Farmers. Oh, hang on. I've just So he studies it. like medicine and stuff. Analytical chemist and he works in the pharmaceutical industry. Damn. So he's, he's he knows everything about medicine. He knows medicine, about them drugs, bro. man. Yeah. That's sick. Um, one bloke here said that we're, he's taken his... Nando's virginity and he's very happy that we've put him onto it and bro, he said I'm that he enjoyed it. it. Bro I miss it. Yeah, so the only places in it, um Europe that would have it would probably be England, right? I think it's yeah, like UK, bro. Yeah. Nowhere else. It's weird. So that sucks for you. Um I've actually had a really yeah. good one about a week ago and yeah? it was succulent flavor f- oh mate you know the best nando's we've had before it was up there oh. it was like a nine there's nothing better than when you have a good one so good um this bloke from england he's been a big um supporter of us he's from brighton right he goes lads i'm gonna have to know how much money dylan spent on this trip man's been nearly gone for half a year <laughs> i would say so lot. far well we pre obviously prepaid for like flights and the first yeah. little bit, I'd probably s- say, and in the first month we didn't spend that much at all because, like, staying with, with family my cousin and, like and Carly's, yeah. I would say maybe like seven k so far. Yeah, and that's pretty good everything. considering how many weeks have you been there for now? Nearly two months coming up. Yeah, but um, how's that say been living abroad? Because that's pretty much living. <laughs> yeah, I would say. The only the reason is that it it would be a lot cheaper if we weren't here in August. This is like the most expensive month for flights summer and the Kong and in Europe. If you come, like we looked flights in September, like some of the halved, even third, mm. bro. Like it's so much cheaper. So if you came ju- before July after August, you'd be even better. Right. But um, how's it been? Sometimes you get sick of like living out of a suitcase. To be yeah, honest, true. like it does get annoying carting that around everywhere. Mm. It was, it was more difficult in Italy because we were seeing more places, so you're traveling more often. When you have like five days somewhere, you do settle in a bit, but right. it is that's the only annoying part: living out of a suitcase. True. I have a question about like Netflix. So when you log into Netflix, do you have access mm-hmm. to their shows because of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So um, that's what's good. Like I've found my KO. And um, like Optusport and stuff that doesn't work. Mm. I have to like VPN and do all that shit. Right. But like Netflix or Disney Plus works, and we just it it comes up. Oh, you're in a different country. Yeah. Um, ratings might be different, and then you just have diff. Like Netflix has Breaking Bad over here and stuff like that. That's whereas cool. I think Stan has that in Australia. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Netflix and stuff has been good, but. To watch a footy game can be a struggle sometimes. Sometimes oh, the connection's not good. But I, d- I do get a few in. When it connects, bro, I, when it connects, bro, I get ecstatic. I'm like, holy shit, it's working. Yeah, that's sick. After the little VPN, I'm in Melbourne, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, we have Kyle sending in a message. He's an Irish fellow and he has a girlfriend and they're moving to Sydney, right? Okay. Um, they're leaving in a couple of weeks' time. He knows that a lot of Irish people emigrate out to Australia every year and um, many stay out there too. So it's obviously a place where there's plenty of Irish people. Um, My question is, do Australian people hold any grudges or ill feeling towards Irish people for moving out and taking jobs? I would say definitely not. No. I don't I haven't heard of that being a thing at all. I didn't even know that was a thing. There's plenty of jobs. Yeah, like all the Irish people that I've come into contact with over here work in bars and like it's fine. Yeah. Like we there, don't there's, care. There's an abundance of jobs in Australia. That's mm. probably the good thing. Like you can get a job as soon as you want over there. Pretty much, yeah. It's like there's – particularly in Perth, there's quite a few. Um, yeah, I've well, never businesses. been – No, I've never had ill feelings towards an no Irish. No way. No. 
they're I like almost it. loved. Yeah, it's nice to it's nice to meet someone like from the UK because they they kind of like you, but you know they're just a bit different, which is great. Yeah, definitely, they're like cousins of ours from the UK. Mm. Yeah, I'd get excited if I met an Irish bartender or something. That'd make me happy. Indeed, um, Dylan, have you heard about the app Be Real? I have, I have. Mm. Carly uses it. I don't have yeah. it yet. Yeah, um, it's interesting. I've had it for a few weeks now. Grace put me onto it, and um, a person who's you very gotta take good the, you got to take the snap when it comes up, right? The yeah, so it'll ways. say like, "Oh, you've got a, you've got two minutes to capture this image," and it happens at a random time. Okay. Okay. A lot of people on it. It seems to be taken over. Yeah, no, it's pretty big. They do have some like teething issues where because there's so many people that have hopped on at once, like sometimes your photo might not upload and And what? Is it just like you follow people and they follow you? Like Instagram yeah, or something? Yeah, so it, it uses your phone contacts so you can add anyone from your phone that has the app or Do any of the lads have it? Oh Josh Rognetta is any the biggest. Josh Rognetta is oh, the biggest really? B realer in the world. Holy shit. His group in particular, like Alex, Michael, Rog, they're always on it. Um, oh, they love it. Yeah, always on it. Um, and basically, yeah, I've been using it a bit. Sometimes I'll miss a day and I'm just like, whatever. But you can post late. So you don't have to post exactly when it says. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting. And then this guy sent in a message. Do you and think he it'll said, take over? Oh, not take over, but it, it's getting big and it's a good idea. But for me, it's been like two weeks and I'm a little bit bored now. Like, I get yeah. it. Like, you're showing people what you're doing at a random point in the day. There's just a lot of social medias now. They're all kind of getting boring to me mm. at this stage. Like, I love TikTok. It's starting to bore me. Instagram, Facebook. It's all just, I don't know. But be real is a little bit like be fake in, in my eyes because you can retake your photos it'll tell people when you have retaken a photo but like if you don't like it you can redo it right i've done yep, it a so few they, times but they should if it's be real they should it should be you can't retake that exactly and this guy's point is exactly to that he goes okay be real app has been blowing up and i was thinking it would be so much better and funnier if your phone automatically took the photo at that specific time of the day you'd catch people doing funny and weird shit just wanted to know you've your got thoughts. like five seconds to hold the phone up that's no it. like it, he reckons like it just happens so if your phone's down it <laughs> takes a photo of a desk if you are holding the your roof, phone bro bro but like imagine some bloke is filming himself murdering someone bang caught yep. done it would make life a thousand times more interesting. It would be funny. Very funny. Um, so be real. I wonder, I don't, I don't know if I'll get it. I'll, I'll see if a few of the lads jump on. Yeah. See if it starts to gain some popular. Or it has not gained sure, popularity. I'm not sure much about our direct group. Um, but like, I don't know. People are like, oh, you don't want to get too many people on it because like it can be private. Um but yeah, Rog Dog, Josh Rognetta, he he loves it. Loves it. And one cool thing. What are his B reels like? Just at coffee shops and shit, or bro, at the gym, gym? Gym every day. It's yeah. gym, uni, and at home studying. Wow, come on, Rob. It's getting um, predictable, bro. I guess it's B real though, isn't it? It is. And his girlfriend Amy, um, mm-hmm. she posted one the other day where Josh Rognetta looked like a French painter. And he goes, oh, yeah, that was the look that I was going for. I don't think it was. Ah, okay. It the was old so French funny. painter look. Um, but, yeah, I don't, it won't hurt to get it. Get it. I'll be friends with you. <laughs> be real. Thanks. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, it's an interesting little app. And um, people have been asking. Who has messages. the best be reels? Oh. Who, whose do you like? Some people. Ben Swanson from Dear Sunday. He puts some effort in sometimes. Like he'll be at work okay. and he'll get his apprentice to take a photo of him doing something funny. Ah, um, uh, yeah. So he's a good, and he's very like high energy. Yeah, I feel like he'd be on. He loves things like that. Yeah, that's, he does. That's definitely a bit of Ben Swanson. And he's got a lot of girls reacting to his B reels. Yeah, yeah, he loves. He it. would too. They're a good um, looking. What did Mason say? They're genetically blessed parents. Our family, sister. definitely. Yeah. Um, we'll just take a little break because the camera's about to run out, but then we'll come back in. I've got a story to tell before we get on to the rest of the show. Cool. All right, Dylan. So back onto Netflix. I was watching this thing last night and a little bit this morning, right. and I find the story insane, right? I've yep. never heard about it before. I don't know if you have or not. I wonder it's if called, it's a show I've watched. 
It's called The Girlfriend Who Didn't Exist. Oh, interesting. I watched one called okay. Woodstock 99. If you have some spare oh, time, bro, have I, a little gaze. I've, I've started that. Um, I do need to watch the rest, but it looked ridiculous. Bro, it gets like, it's fucking wild. To the it's point where it's just all illegal and there are some terrible bro, it's people. It's pure chaos. It gets so much, it's horrible. It's crazy what happened. Yeah. Anyway, so All this right. place, I'm, I'm going to read the storyline from IMDb. The right, girlfriend the that never exists, that didn't exist. Yep, who, who didn't exist, right. Yep. Born into an Hawaiian paradise, all-American football standout, Manti Teo, yeah. leads a simple life summed up in just three words. All faith, American. family, football, right? College football's golden boy could do no wrong, but when tragedy strikes, the increased scrutiny of his online relationship causes a media maelstrom that threatens his future and legacy, right? Oh, wow. So basically, this guy was going to the NBA as like a top three pick. Sorry, M- NFL, NFL. Okay, so he was the man. Right. He was the man, NFL. Hawaiian, He's from all Hawaii, American. Strong, big guy, dominant, right? About to now, make it to the league, set for life, mm-hmm. win a Super Bowl. So he's gone from Hawaii to the University of Notre Dame. Yeah, right? a big one. Yep, I, mm-hmm. I've heard of that one before. And this was in 2009 when he went there. Okay. Okay. Now this was when the internet was starting to find its feet. Yeah, um, baby steps of the internet. Yeah, but everyone was still very new to the concept of online dating and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, they would be. So... Basically, he got a friend request on Facebook from this really attractive girl. um, And this girl had similar values, similar this, similar that. Faith, football and family. Mm -hmm. And like this, I'm going to have some spoilers. I do recommend people watch it because it's just crazy. And the way the story is told is good. What is it, a one-part documentary or a It's a two-part documentary, hour each. Okay. Okay. And basically, this guy um, was so like... I don't know. He was so attached to football that he couldn't spend much time with women. Um, okay. So he's talking to this girl online and then he's starting to like form this relationship with her where they're having phone calls, right? Um, the The girl on the other end basically said that she had a car accident and she was in a coma. So oh. not, not, not in a coma. So she had a car accident and she was in hospital severely injured. She right? banged up. Yeah. Banged up. Now, the person on the other end said that, um, oh no, got um, a friend to tell the story about, oh, like, yeah, so and so. I forget the name of the person. I can't remember it. But basically, long story short, um, the catfish, which was a boy, right? Oh, no. It was a boy who had all of the thoughts of a girl. And wanted to transition into a girl. Damn. Right? That's when even transgender wasn't that bro. popular of a thing, bro. Mm-hmm. So they hadn't um, transitioned yet, right? They were still a man pre-tran, at the time. Pre-tranny. And what happened was this person kept it a secret for so long. And then eventually um, the, the character got leukemia and died. So, so basically this football player who's been talking to this person, this imaginary person for years, right? I'm talking two or three years. They were, they were going out dating, but they'd never met, right? Um, dies. And then he starts playing really well. Like, and he's doing interviews. Exactly. And because he is like the superstar, the one that everyone's watching, he has to do these interviews saying like, oh, I really loved her and like, I'm going to miss her and stuff. When it had never happened, right? This is and tragic, then bro. Basically, all of it came out just before he was going into the NFL draft. Then people thought that he was gay, oh and like this no. was his cover-up story that he had a secret girlfriend that he'd made up. And back and then, then, they're not accepting a gay or bro, American all, athlete, bro. I'm telling you, the NFL teams turned their back on him and said, "No, nah, we're not having you," right? Which yeah. was. Bro, and it's a really tragic story, but he's also dumb and an idiot. He didn't even know what the term catfish was back Bro, then. Bro, this has got to be so the, like one of the original catfishes. This is all time. No, it, it, it would have been. Um, and th- then the girl who was um, in the photos, right, the, the pretty girl, she didn't even know it was happening until all the news broke out 
years after, and That's it was bro. this whole big deal. It turns out what happened out to him in the, the end. I haven't finished it yet. I'm, oh, okay. I'm, near, I'm near the end, but I'm. A, I want to know what his life turned out to be, good. bro. He's a he's alive and he's a really good looking bloke, right? Um, but yeah, um, I don't even he know. Could if Could have he's been made a Super Bowl MVP, bro. So, and then basically the person who was pretending to be this girl went on Doctor Phil. Did like, like they tried to make him do voice message checks and all these things, um, because he was having phone calls mm-hmm. with the the player and sounded like a girl. But they would get into character. That oh. they do this like method acting thing where they um, make the room completely back black at home, lay down and get into the zone of being a woman, right? And Talented, then, bro, bro, this is the fucked up thing. Um, and Manti Teo's friend said, "Yeah, like that person should be on Disney because she did every single voice." So she made up a family member that he would talk oh to on the phone. And she, did, she made she up sh- a cousin to talk to on the phone. And she made That's up, yeah. So she could have been a star actress. He could have been a, mm-hmm. an NFL and star, bro. They're this, is even, this is even crazier. So the, the star actress, right, used to be a very good football player as well, but hated it and was forced into it through family because there's a bro, big culture of football. Two bro, potential t- league players. I reckon just have a watch because it's insane. It's a full-on story. It's nuts. Um, Sounds the good but yeah, to me. Manti Teo. And apologies if I've used the wrong terminology because the person uh, used to be a man has gone it's to a woman. Different. It wasn't a thing then, bro. It's okay. Nah. Thinking of old um, internet, I want to I wanna shout out MySpace because a memory just popped into my head. My brother mm. loaded up his old MySpace account, right? When I was oh, at his yeah. house a few. Bro, next level. You could fully customise your page. You could have a song. So when people click on your page, a song plays. I Bro, like that. MySpace, they need to recreate it. I really like that. MySpace. Like I can see, I always wondered what was it. Then he loaded his up and I thought, okay, this is the business. Mm. Like it's... Bro, you can have whatever colours you want, whatever layout. It was sick. That was how people used to make it in the music world too. They'd chuck their songs mm-hmm. up on MySpace. They'd put Bro, their I like comedy videos on MySpace. It sounds like a great thing. Oh, we should bring it back. I, lo- I want MySpace. Imagine having a song when people click on your page. Because Facebook's a bit of a snore, you know? Yeah, it is. MySpace now, sounds like a bit of character. It, mm. can, I wonder if you can... Can you make a new account now or no? Sh- I don't know. Why. I haven't, I've never actually looked it up myself. MySpace. I mean, if Be Real's a thing, surely MySpace can be a thing. Definitely. All right, one court case this week. Let's mm-hmm. get into it. You're about to enter the courtroom of Jammo and Dylan. The people are real, the cases are real, and the rulings are final. This is Jammo and Dylan's courtroom. All right. This girl says, let's backtrack a little to three years ago when I was in year 12. I wasn't someone to admit to liking many boys. I would always keep it to myself, but there was one boy that I really started to like, and I admitted it to my friends, okay? This guy and I started talking, then my best friend of six years goes and loses her virginity to him while I was away for the weekend. Um, She claimed she didn't know that I liked him, and then for the next year we weren't friends with each other. Slowly we started to come back together as we had a lot of the same friends and we're always around each other. Fast forward to the present day and we are good friends, even though we live a couple hours away from each other now. I went to a festival three weeks ago and planned to meet up with her. All of our other friends went home early, so it was just us left. I met these guys and started dancing with one of them for the rest of the festival. We go to an after party and my friend cuts me out and takes the guy I was with, even though she was with the guy's friend before. Is she just trying to prove she can have whatever I want? And in brackets, she ended up sleeping with this guy um, and then she le- like I left her at the party alone. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I have it barely that way, doesn't exactly. It? I've barely spoken to her since. She hasn't brought it up, and I can tell she is trying really hard to be friends with me. Sorry for the long one. Love the potty boys. So I've put this into the court case, into the courtroom. So in her head, she's gone. All right, 
the guy that I liked, you lost your virginity to, and you've done that. Yep. Why? Maybe he was a good-looking bloke, got around, end of story. You never know. Right? The second time seemed a little bit more personal, right? Because she's been hanging yes. around with her. F- the, sorry, this girl was hanging around with the guy, dancing with him for the whole festival. All night, all bro. Night. Oh, yeah, all night, all night. And then after party comes and the girl goes, nut mine, bang, bang, bang. I mean, what it what it sounds like is what it seems, you know? And it seems like your friend is an alpha woman who's taking what she wants, right? Yeah, she's, she's trying to assert dominance, bro. But what's happened is this has occurred twice, right? Yeah. So who's is the friend guilty for stealing people from her or is it just life? That's a good question. It's a little bit of both. It's like... It's a little bit of both. The first one, now, if you've told your friend that you like this boy and you that's never rough. normally do then that, that, yeah, right? That's rough. That seems a little bit, yeah, rough indeed. Um, the party one isn't as guilty because that's kind of just the ups and downs of a night out, you know? Yeah. Okay. So we can sort of say uh, a small sentence, maybe like, I don't know, two weeks in jail, have a little hard, little mm-hmm. reflection. Think about your actions, yep. and then come out and hopefully rekindle that friendship. But um, yeah, I don't know, yep. man. That's rough. And like she said, it's fool me nice, once, bro. shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I like that. Yep. I like that a lot. All right, voice messages, Dylan. There are six of them this week. Let's go. Perfect. We hope you're enjoying the Jammo and Dylan show. It's now time to have your stories heard and your questions answered. To be featured on the potty, message the boys. At Jamo and Dylan on Instagram. Hey boys, sorry for the late message, just at work. Just had a random thought though, not random, but I know you boys are uh, follow sports and that. I just want to like figure out how to like NRL players, AFL players, whoever it is, get away with like getting caught by the police with like doing like say like coke, whatever, any drugs, and then like play on the field the next weekend. I don't know if I'm missing something, but like. If you, like, get caught, like, red-handed, with your pants down, like, how is the NRL not going, like, mate, you're banned? Because it's, like, or doing a drug test. Like, is it just, you know, they can do it because they're them? Or, like, yeah, I don't know. I would uh, be interested to hear your take on it. Cheers, boys. Love the body. Mm. I'd say they're slightly protected somewhat. They are. Because Isn't... In AFL, it's a three-strike thing. Isn't the first time not publicised? I, is that a, I oh, think that's I'm not, a thing I'm I've not heard. sure, but um, it could be. I, th- I think the first... I, I might be wrong, but I think I've heard that if the first time you have a slip-up with drugs, I don't think they okay. release it. Unless it's like a Bailey but Smith where it's on camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think they obviously, you know, it's like anyone though, like... They are a class above in society, more money, more backing. It's like, you know, how do rich people get away with crimes mm. that poor people go to jail for 20 years for? Like, it's just, that's just the way it is in the world. Indeed. And then this guy is also very passionate about our old topic, MILF of the Week, right? And he said a little... Oh, I've, seen, I've seen this, yeah. He said, boys, you need to bring back MILF of the Week, but bigger and better. The MILF that wins MILF of the Week for each month goes head to head. So we'll have the July MILF. Then at the end of the year, all twelve go to head to go head to head, versing in a vote off like finals footy. Milf of the year gets a Jamal and Dylan gold sash, similar to what chicks get for their eighteenth, and the cherry on top, the Jamal and Dylan Milf calendar. Um, love you, stay safe, wow. keep killing it. It could. I don't mind the. I don't. That's a great idea. But the thing is, we need to get the mums more on board because last time it was sort of like, um, like I'd like the account. The, it mm. it needs to come from them. Yeah, like. It's all, it's hard because it's normally like a bloke, um, his mate's mum, and he'll he'll submit it yeah. to the show. I would say they need to self submit. Yeah, but I don't think we just we don't have enough mums that listen. I know. And I don't want to see our mums on a calendar. Mm, Shout out Vanessa true, and Desley, right? but I I can't be having that. I will not allow what that. What months Vanessa born? October. Yeah, Miss September and October, bro. We got two months done back already. To back. Back um, to back. What about your dad? Two best pages. <laughs> Mr. May. Mr. May, yeah, Mr. August. It was his birthday okay. two days ago, actually. Beautiful. Happy to Johnny. Happy birthday, John, mate. Um, but, yeah, it's something we'll think about. 
it's something we'll yeah, think about. That was a good segment. But like you said, it became it became like you said, Oh, this is my, you know, friend's teacher. Yeah. This and, is my and we can't be having that all my the time. cousin's piggy, you know, fucking physio. Yeah. We need like if they self submitted, that's what I'm that's when it gets interesting. What could potentially happen is there will be some mums that will be down for it, like a young mum or something, right? Even an older yeah. mum. I'm not gonna age discriminate. But um no way, bro. It's sort of like the kid who listens to the show has to go to like their mum or their auntie or something and then say, oh, hey, there's this thing. Do you want to be a part of it? It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. If that can happen, then we'll get it, get it rolling Indeed. again. But yeah, I do like the segment. From earlier. The punching one. Yeah. So hopefully we get a lot of that. And Mill for the Week can happen again if, if yeah. it picks up. Indeed. So it's up to the people, you know. This is a wholesome um, voice message. That's not really a topic or anything. It's just about his Monday night routine. Okay. Oi, boys. Not sure if this will make the potty. Not really fussed either way. Just wanted to uh, let you know I'm a school teacher. I run my own clothing brand with a podcast. And Actually, my Monday know. night ritual is laying down and listening to the Jamo and Dylan show. I've done, you know, as far back as I can remember. Every Monday night, that's just the plan. You know, Miso wants to do something. Nah, I'm listening to the Jammo and Dylan show. Love the way he says it too. The Jammo and Dylan show. Respect, bro. That's that's the kind of people that should be teaching the next generation. I'm going to give him a shout out. Um, It's the number one downhill skateboarding clothing brand in the world. Mm -hmm. Downhill skateboarding They're dangerous people With the knee pads And the elbow pads and shit Yeah crazy people bro Flying down This page is called Get that skate Skate with an 8 So go and check it out Send me the link bro Alright alright On whatever Instagram or something I'll have a look Yeah I'll just go into our Messages And it is in General General alright Just go down He's down there, but he's a good bloke. He's been listening for a very long time, um, and we appreciate him. All right. First name? I'm not sure. Get that skate, mate. That's right. his name. Oh, he sent it from the from account. His account. Yeah. Oh, okay. Respect. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay, boys. Thank you for the potty. Love it the most. Um, but the other day, I was listening to quite an old episode, and on it, you were asking, answering a question, and a girl asked you whether you like pink or white marshmallows, like which one you'd pick. And the girl said pink. You both said pink, and I was I was shocked because I'm 100 percent white marshmallow. So I asked my friends and family, and we all said white marshmallows. So it got me thinking about, like, you know, all the different, like, verses, like, this or that kind of vibe. So I've come up with a list for you, and I want to see your answers, because I believe that there is a correct answer for all of these, but because we disagree on marshmallows, I think we might disagree on this. So I'm very interested to see your answers and see if we have the same or if we're different. We appreciate that. We, yeah, we do bro, appreciate when I that. said... Um, when I said pink marshmallows, Carly was shocked. She said white marshmallows. And, what are you thinking? And how about this? Upon reflection, right, I've, I've it sort of sat with me for a bit because we copped a little bit of flack on TikTok. Some people were saying... Same. I started feeling like shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I just was thinking back to my childhood and I think I might have lied by saying pink. Yeah? I, th- I genuinely believe that I probably... Like it would have been a two to one ratio of me having white to pink. I'm just I'm changing because of peer pressure, bro. I just want to fit in. <laughs> Fuck this. All right, I'm so going we're going to go down this list. Some of these things I don't even like, right? So okay. so like I can't even compare. But this or that, this could be a new segment. People have sent in sort of would you rather this or that as yeah, a fuck request. It. This so could be a new see. segment too. This or that. This or that. We need to put put John back to work. We will. We'll get him in the pantry where he records <laughs> them. <laughs> um, we got, bro. We've got to we've got to send like show everyone where he records because these sound professional and they would bro, not believe he does them. Bro, the production of this podcast from where we do it, people would not believe it. Oh, Remember when we had Adam and Simon? These blokes are on Gogglebox yeah. asking us like about how we produce the show, and I'm thinking, bro, it started off in a man cave and <laughs> the. The voice behind our show records in a literal cupboard. Right, he records in a cupboard because he thinks it's more soundproof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we it's love It's amazing. John. All right, so firstly, 
thin versus thick chips. So we're talking like a Macca's fry versus like a KFC fry. And it's so hard. I sort of see them as different foods. They are completely like... I. One of my favourite. Oh, my God. Because then there's also even the th- real thicker version. You're like thick cut yeah, that are even yeah. bigger than um, like, you know, like McCain's yeah, or whatever. I'm thinking of like a Red Rooster oh. KFC. See, the thing with me, I'd put Macca's over KFC chips, but I would mm-hmm. put like a Red Rooster chip over a Macca's. I'm the same. I love a Red Rooster. They're yeah, really large good. Chips. That gets me going, mm. bro. We might actually have some. But I would... Oh, before we're indoors tonight. Maybe I'll, I'd take... <laughs> I. Th- I don't know. Thinner, like I'd prefer a red rooster over a thick cut. Yeah. So we'll say a medium. So a medium <laughs> cut? I don't know. But I love this a burger hard. place that has the thin chips. get roasted. You know what I mean? Like yeah, a burger true. place that has the yeah. thin chips is sick. Some fries. Like the fries, yeah. Um, all right. Normal salt versus chicken salt. I'll go chicken salt. Um, normal salt versus chicken. See, I do, I like chicken salt a lot. Carly doesn't, so I don't get to indulge as mm. much anymore. See, bro, I would have I normal salt 95% of the time, but I still appreciate chicken salt more. Yeah. it's like same. a rarity. Yeah, and okay. it is nice. Cheeseburger versus hamburger. Uh, I like cheeseburger. So like do cheeseburger I. from Macca's is my, that's like my go-to. Mm. I love that burger. I love a double cheeseburger. They just they just taste better, bro. Yeah. I've had other types of burgers at McDonald's, and the cheeseburgers the goat. Now these two, I don't I don't do. So you're gonna have to tell me, barbecue sauce okay. or tomato sauce. Um, I'll take tomato. Okay, Coke over. I'm not. I don't put barbecue sauce on like my sausages or anything. But if you like barbecue basting, that that's some good shit. You know what I'm saying? Like on Indeed. meat or yeah. So that's what I can fuck with. Um, yeah. Yeah. Coke Zero versus Diet Coke. Um, I'll take a Coke Zero. Okay. Pre's versus Kick-Ons. Pre's for me. Pre's, bro. Pre's. Pre's is better than a nut. Pre's is actually magic. Like, out. Pre's. Especially like a music festival pre's. You and I love those. Bro, I like like Listen listen Out pre's more Mm. than Listen Out. Wow. I love Listen Out pre's. Wow. It's it's midday, we're playing beer pong, everyone's in the best mood ever. Like Prees is incredible. Mm. I love Prees in summer in Australia. I don't think it gets better. Even Prees for a night out, like we've got the right environment to do it. Um it's always fun. It's five o'clock. It's the exciting because you know the oh, night's gonna be good. I love bro, Prees, there's something about it that can't be touched. And the last one here is sour lollies versus plain lollies. It's hard. I love lollies, but they give me pimples, so I don't indulge oh, anymore. Oh, wow. That's an interesting... I, but I love them. I love lollies, but okay. I just, um, well, Sour for me is more like a challenge. You know, you like you have warheads and it really mm. like... You yeah. start going crazy. Like, I enjoy sour. And shit. I enjoy sour less, but yeah, it's more of a challenge. I don't know. I'm really I think I like the normal lollies better. I think I yeah. go normal, but sour is also interesting. Yeah. I'll go. I'll go normal as well. G'day, champions. Uh, I just want to say, good job at uh, keeping the potty going, even though that deals is overseas. So, well done in that department. Uh, just a thought: uh, deaf people driving, if they do drive, how do they know when emergency services are coming from behind? Uh, just a bit of a thought. You anyway, know, keep up the good work. Cheers. I think night time. Be aware, bro. It's the flashing lights, like that's easy. Deaf aren't blind. Yeah, you know what but I mean. In, in daytime, bro, they're getting in trouble. But I don't hear of too many accidents of like deaf person doesn't hear, mm. cuts off. I wonder you what know? the goal is. Like for example, when I got my driver's license, I wore glasses, right? So you need to have on mm-hmm. your driver's license that you have a visual aid. Okay. Yep. I yep. wonder if there's any anything about um, like deaf people, like for hearing. Like because surely you need some hearing have to be. For, for driving. Um, Maybe you need a hearing aid. I yeah, don't know. I'm not sure, but like we said, because it might pick pick up a frequency mm. of that might pick up the frequency of. Um, I watched a movie actually about deaf people, and he got like a hearing aid. Yeah. Um. He had hearing, went deaf, and then the sound that this hearing aid made, bro, horrible. horrible. I actually feel for deaf people that's like that. If that's how they hear the world. Oh, that's that's really really sad, man. Indeed. All right. 
Um, I was just in the fucking toilet at work and, um, you know, just had me a morning coffee, feeling a bit, feeling a bit rough in the guts, decided to sit in the toilet for a bit and, um, I was just sitting there and, you know, just, just sat out, done my business and I've just got this fucking massive backlash, a backlash, backsplash and it's just hit my ass, tickled my balls and... It's just not a good feeling. And I, and I was thinking, why does it have to be water there? Like, why can't it be... Why can't it just be, like, fucking the rest of the bowl or just something, something else, and then it just opens up and you flush? Because, like, the backsplash... I don't know if you can play. It's, just, it's an uncomfortable feeling. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to know what you guys thought about that one. Keep up the good work. Uh, loving the potty. Yeah, I understand his concerns, but I think water I is an bro. essential part of the toilet. And I just don't... I don't know what the alternative could be. No. Like nothing's even coming close. I understand his pain. Imagine if, he's, been if there. he goes, oh, sand. Yeah, see, that's, <laughs> nah, that's cat litter. That's litter, bro. It is litter. We don't want that. Um, and then he was saying, oh, why can't it just be the bowl? Because you shit onto the, like, into the bowl and then when you flush, like it might not get it all. Like it's easier if it's sitting exactly. in There'll water and then gumming out. Like. There'll be an odour for sure mm. left that other way. I went to probably one of the worst toilets that I've ever been to in my lifetime, right, yesterday. Really? In a shopping centre that um, I never knew had toilets, right? So, you know the jesters we go to? Yes. That shopping centre, they have a toilet. I didn't know right? they had toilets either. It's out that's, the, that's the hood, bro. It's like next to this like halal um, meat place and then like uh, – and like – this Arabian gift shop, right? Okay. And I've walked in there and there's two um, t- toilet bowls and they're just filled with shit, right? Oh. And they haven't been cleaned out. And then I went to the, the urinal and it was just filled with piss. Like the, the flushing wasn't working. But instead yeah. of people not going to the toilet, they just kept shitting on they top just of shit. They pile on. Yeah. And it was a shit mountain. That's what crackheads do, bro, you know? Yeah, and I wasn't happy with it. Speaking of crackheads, I was leaving work um, the other night and there was it was bucketing down with rain and there was this guy, mm-hmm. right, like a full crackhead, jogging down Tonkin Highway with his thumb out. That's sick. That's crackhead behaviour at its finest. And, like, I was flying, I was going, like, 100 and he's yelling out at me and I could hear him uh, when I was going 100. He's got in, they've got endurance for days, bro. He probably went all night. Probably, man. Leave. He wouldn't stop running. All right, we've got one here. I'm not sure. I put an asterisk next to it. I think that means maybe. So I'll just play it. Um, and yeah, it, yeah. I don't know if it's good or not. But message was shit. Um, he's saying if your missus sleeps with another b- bloke, obviously you're going to break up with her. But if your missus was to sleep with a girl, would you break up with her? And he said <laughs> I wouldn't. And I'm sort of in the same boat. But then, like, if they have a proper like connection and want to be with them type shit, then you've got to go. Like you, you've been Obviously surpassed. Obviously I'd like to be a, yeah, but I'd like to be a part of that party. Yeah. You know? yeah. That sounds like there's a spot there for me, bro. Like <laughs> um, that sounds incomplete. You know what I mean? It's interesting because in some ways it is a double standard, but I will much prefer that and probably let it it's slide. It's a double standard <laughs> I'm here for, bro. Like, but then it would be completely different. This com- is why the world's a backwards place. Like you look at exactly. like a guy, if he was to have sex with another guy, the girl would probably be like, nah, like, nah, yeah, I'm cutting. Bro. I guess it depends what community you're in. You yeah, know? exactly. Lots of communities. Yeah. Lots of communities. Exactly. Um, we need to start another Zoom, but then we have yep. four confessions to round out the show. All right. Happy days. So we have this girl who actually submitted her mum in a year ago to the MILF segment, right? Was she a good one? Yeah, very good. She d- she would have won um, her week from memory. Um, so it's good genetics all round. Good genetics indeed. Now, basically, this is in regards to the incest story from last week. Okay. Hey, boys, was listening to the most recent app about how far you would go with a cousin. I thought I would share this. My dad's first wife and him were third cousins. Wow. So it breeds, bro, it breeds well. Their grandparents were second cousins who grew up hanging out together as kids. Then their kids had a baby together. 
So technically, that baby is not only my half-sister, she's also my fourth cousin. My dad hates talking about it um, because the kids make it weird for him, but he reckons it's not weird at all. So... So my dad's first wife yeah. and him were third cousins. Wow. Wow. Just crazy. I don't I don't understand how it works. Someone please educate me. Um but my that's brain mad. Is not working. That's crazy. And I understand how he finds that uncomfortable. So and then he had kids with her. Yeah, but um, that was the first wife. So I don't know if this girl uh, is but product the girl's of probably from the MILF in him. Mm. So I wonder if she's better looking than her siblings, because then that would prove that maybe the incest I'd isn't so probably good. Probably say so. That's just my guess. Probably I haven't no, seen probably the other no one. Deformi- probably no serious deformities or anything on no, her side. None of none are present. <laughs> no. Okay. No seven on. toes. Hey guys, so I think this uh, popped up in the potty a few weeks ago, but there was a, a lady who was saying she has mayo on her toasties instead of butter. Well, I've just given it a whirl, and I am now Team Mayo. Uh, give it a go. Give it a go. And that's where I, I draw the line. To, bro. I don't there want to, bro. There are things that go. disgust me in the world, and that's up there in the top five list. Yeah. Um, I don't want to. As you know, and as all the viewers know and listeners, I'm not a fan of mayo. Never have been. Nah. Been scarred from... from countless encounters where i didn't think there'd be mayo in a burger and i've bitten <laughs> in and then it's just seeped into my teeth and shit and I, oh, it's disgusting funny, I, I really don't like it um i remember when we did a challenge remember we did a hot wings challenge i'm surprised and I, you did it bro i'm surprised you even oh, we had to have a little little dip in there in it. Oh, i couldn't stand it but um yeah no i'm not a fan of that i'm not going to try it he said fellas try it there is no chance um for me to do that you can feel free to, Dylan. But I'm fine with the butter, bro. I'm fine with the butter too. Um, what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think? All right, hey boys, loving the potty as usual. Ain't ever written in like this, um, but I've never been in a position like this before either. Now, this is really well written. You will appreciate this. He's an English okay. bloke, right? The English blokes know how to word things. Yes, bro. Okay. Straight to the point, my best mate had pulled this bad little bird. Problem is, I've already been there a long time ago, 2015 in college when I didn't know him, right? She had this weird birthmark on her ass, almost like a shit stain. I have videos in my archive of her writing it. I don't know if she's told him about me. He goes on about that she's the one, and is it even worth mentioning to him that I slept with her? Don't want to be a prick later if I didn't tell him. Um, is it worth telling him? I reckon let him know. Show him the video and just see what oh, happens. Oh, no, <laughs> you show him the video, it's over. Because then he's got that mental image and he's just... I think, uh, let him know, let him know. They just say, hey man, I, I didn't want to hide this from you any longer, but hey bro, seven years ago... <laughs> Familiar? Seven years ago, I banged your shit-stained bum girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's that, bro. Yeah. All right. Last one of the week coming up. All right. Shout hey, out to um, Rossi Boys School. Ross Boys, South Africa. Oh, yeah. Bro. They do some Incredible. of the best like rugby chants, school chants, private school Because the original boy. one I watched 30 times. I've watched the new one 10 times. It's in. Okay, can it. you send me the original one just so I can watch it again? Yeah, I'll try and have a find, bro. It's All amazing. Right. Yeah, shout out to that school. We'd love to visit. We'd love to speak to the boys. The drummer. I love the drummer. Um, yep. The Get trumpet the uniform, bloke. Everything. Oh, bro. When if the trumpet we, comes in and they just go nuts. Like they go, it's, it, if it you and I level. could go to South Africa, right, oh, and bro. have a day trip at the school and just be yep. a part of that, I would be... It'd have, oh, give me a game day. Game day. A game day. And we will support your school. To the maximum. Give me rugby school boys final, you know? And I will have um, face paint on, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll go in. I'll wear your blazer. I'll do everything I can to be a part of Give it. Give me that light blue vest, bro. Mm. You know how... The drummer's wearing. You know how um, 
a lot of women who grow up without a father will have these so-called daddy issues, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like you and I have grown up without the private school boys sport chant. Like we went to a private school, right? But we just didn't get the full experience and that's what no, we No, our, our school was sort of like a half-assed excuse of a private school, yeah, wasn't that, it? that loved liturgical dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More than the sport, yeah, our, our yeah. team could win. I remember we won back to back games of footy. Um, we went undefeated in Year games. Twelve. They didn't give a shit. <laughs> Was that when we played two games, three games? Yeah, I think we played the same school twice. But in yeah. my eyes, we were still dominant. <laughs> and like, it would feel really good if the school like shouted us out for that. Yeah, they just didn't care. But then, like, they'd come twenty eighth at the liturgical dance and get to yeah. perform in a standing <laughs> ovation. <laughs> Um, but yeah, shout out to that school. What's it called again? Ross Boys School. Ross Ross Boys Rossy, something like that. I don't know okay, the actual right. name, but oh, you know, we get it. All right, hey lads, long time listener from Adelaide. Um, saw your trip to the red light district involving a banana, and it reminded me of a situation I'm in at the moment. So two yeah. years ago, for my buck show, my mates got a hotel room in the city and got me a fruit and veg show. I had a banana, cucumber, and a carrot in my mouth while um, she sat on it and rid it all over my face. So now it's my now it's my mate's turn to have a buck show, and his wife said no to strippers. So do I get my revenge and get him strippers, or do I respect that it's so? Or so I, or do (laughs) or do I respect his other half um, and don't do it? Thanks, lads. Keep up the good work. I'm not, I'm not going to please 50% of the crowd, but <laughs> I think sh- sh- strip on, bro. <laughs> strip on, bro. I'll play oh, devil's man. advocate and I'll go, there's just res- respect the wife's because she's going to imagine if she no just way finds out. I'm not up. getting strippers for my like mates bucks night. If I'm, if I'm the best <laughs> man and it's my job, whether they're, they might be funny strippers. They might be hot strippers. I don't know what it What's a be, funny stripper. What does that entail? Like a little person. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or like a three hundred, or like a three hundred pound okay. lady, <laughs> but there's no way it's not happening, bro. Oh, I strap myself. If in. anything, could make me want to do it more. Yeah, because <laughs> you. I'd, I'd, I'd get a hundred. I'd get a hundred. <laughs> That's <next level. laughs> more people, more girls and boys. Make a YouTube video out of it. Oh, imagine doing um, like I'll side play men, it. Play the after Tinder. movie. Sidemen Tinder with a hundred strippers. Yeah, bro. Mm. <sighs> All right. But, well, um, that was a long episode this week and that's it. I know. We did well. That was a big one. So I hope you guys appreciate the time and effort we've put in. Um, we love this stuff. We love it. Yeah. Um, this was a good one. I'm going to be doing a few of these um, in Bali in a couple of months still. So Perfect. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be good. Um, what Do you have dates and stuff? I haven't booked dates, but I've got the, the time off work. So um, I've got a month off. So anywhere in that gap, I'll, I'll be over there doing the show and hopefully making some contacts over there. Um, mm-hmm. We'll get on like Bali's best singer or something. Of course, bro. Um, but yeah. Paradise. Even if you save a little bit of money, pop over for a few days for a yeah. weekend or something. That'd be Save good. up some pennies. I'll do yeah, like well, a we'll three we'll days see. work or something. We'll see what happens with. Um, when you get back with the accountant and trying to sort out our tax, if there's any yeah. left over, maybe we can indulge. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens, yeah. bro. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your week, Dylan, um, and everyone too, listening mate. to the show. And yeah, go Frio. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Jamo and Dylan show. Make sure to subscribe to the boys on YouTube and share the podcast with a mate.